Welcome to How to Enter Bills in QuickBooks Online. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. And so what I'm going to walk through here in this video is how to enter a bill correctly in QuickBooks Online. So um, entering bills in QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online, a lot of people uh, generally don't follow this process. And I think it's you know, when you're when you're trying to grow your company, when you're trying to figure out, okay, how's my company doing? Um, you know, where's the cash flow? What's selling? What's not selling? Am I making money? Am I not making money? I think it's really, really, really important uh, to make sure that you get the books right because without that uh, good information, you know, you're going to have uh, financial statements that just aren't right. And so you may think you're making money and you're not, or you know, think you're not making money but you are. And so this is really, really important. It's so um, part of this is making sure that you enter these bills correctly and then use the pay bill bills function in QuickBooks Online uh, to pay those bills and clear them out of there. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about here today. Okay, so we're here at the home screen. Uh, you've got these shortcuts. Uh, you can say right here, add bill. Uh, you can also up, go up to here where the, the new and the plus sign and go to bill under vendors. Okay, you can go either way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add bill. All right. Okay. So it's going to take me to the add bill screen. Now, you know, this is a bill you could have gotten through email. You could have, you know, somebody dropped it off. You could have got it in the mail, whatever the case may be. Uh, but the first thing you're going to do is you're going to choose the vendor. Okay. So in this sample company file, I don't have any vendors set up. This is a uh, sample QuickBooks file uh, within QuickBooks Online. So I'm going to say that it is Costco. Let me make sure I spell that right. Okay. And I'm going to say save. I'm not putting in any details right now with the mailing address, but of course you're going to make sure that you put in the mailing address and, and all that uh, contact information for the vendor. Okay. So uh, terms, all right, so you're going to look at the bill, and these are some of the more typical terms uh, that vendors will give you. You've got due on receipt, net 10, which means it's due in 10 days, 15, 30, 60, et cetera. Uh, some of them aren't really on a set schedule, and if they are not, uh, you know, like maybe they're 23 days, uh, you can add new to say net 23, or you can simply just type in the due date over here, okay? So we're going to say it's net 15. All right. Now, this right here, this is very, very important, the bill date. And, and the reason this is important is to make sure that you capture these bills in the right time period, uh, because when you don't, then that expense can go to the wrong time period. Again, throwing off your financial statements and the way that you look at those. OK, so the bill date is going to be the actual date of the bill. All right. It's not the date that you enter it. It's not the date you receive it, but you have to look at the bill and see what the date of the bill is. OK, so, you know, if somebody mails a bill uh, and you get it a week later, whatever the case may be, you know, this date's going to be much different. All right. So let's say that this was 331. All right. March 31st, 2021. The due date uh, should calculate automatically when you choose the terms. You can override this and put a different date, uh, but this one automatically calculates based on net 15. All right. And then this is the other very important piece of this. All right. Is the bill number. All right. So most bills, you know, most invoices, most bills that you receive, in your business are going to have a bill number, you know, whatever that number is. And the reason it's important to enter this in QuickBooks Online is because if you, let's say that you, you know, the, the vendor sends this bill again and you don't remember that you paid it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but they send it again and you enter it. If you enter the bill number and you do it on each and every bill that you put into the system, uh, QuickBooks will alert you and say, hey, you know what? This might be a duplicate bill. You've already received this. Uh, is this a duplicate? And that will really help you avoid uh, double paying bills. And that happens all the time. Okay. So you make sure that you look at the bill. And sometimes bills don't have bill numbers. And, you know, if, if that's the case, you can put in nothing or you can put in the vendor name, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, but always look for that bill number. So I'm going to say this is 542189. All right. And then you can start typing in tags if you want, which will help you search for this later on. 
Okay, and then category details. Okay, so the category is the account. All right, so you're going to choose what expense account this goes to. Uh, we're going to say that this was office expenses or office supplies. We'll say supplies uh, because it's from Costco. We got some supplies for the office. All right, and then you can type in a description there. You don't need to, but you definitely can. And then the amount, we're going to say 24132. All right, now this billable is if this is going to be billable to a customer. Okay. All right. And then you can also check the tax box. Okay. But you don't need to check any of these. All right. Now, if it is billable, then you definitely want to uh, specify the customer name over here. And then when, when you do that and you go to invoice that customer, this will be a billable expense that you can pass on to that customer. Okay. So we're going to leave this unchecked for now. All right. Now this is if this is an expense and down here under item details is if, uh, this is, uh, beyond this video, but you would put in the product or service description. So if this was, uh, let's say something that you're selling, um, or, you know, that um, is some inventory type item that you're ordering this, you would put under, under the item details. Okay. So in this example, we're going to assume this is an expense, supplies expense. So it goes under category details. All right. Now, uh, everything else, if you want to, you can um, attach the bill here, just so you have it for your records and can shred the actual bill, uh, but you don't have to. Okay. So you can say save and schedule payment, uh, or if you hit this, you can say save and new or save and close. I'm going to save and close. Okay. You must select a vendor. Ah, well, I did. <laughs> let's go back up here. Uh, let's say that we need to add some details here. I'm going to leave the rest of this blank. We're going to save this. Okay. It's already using that name. Of course, the sample file is giving me uh, some fits here. <laughs> okay. Well, what you do at this point is you're going to hit save and close if you're done or save and new, and you will have your bill saved. And then, of course, when you go to pay that bill, you're going to go to the pay bills function, check it off, and pay it that way. Any questions, any comments, uh, feel free to leave those below. Also, uh, feel free to reach out to me on my website, which is qbuniversity.org.